everyone. Welcome to Source Snack Break. We have another fun adventure today. It is June 25th. And on the line with me on my lovely little cell phone, I've got Jen with Herman Miller. Before I introduce her, I'll explain a couple things about the webinar tool. So you're all muted automatically, um, but you can use the live chat there on the right um, to pop in your favorite emoji to say hey. And you can also use the live chat to ask any questions. And we'll be sure we answer any of them that you have. Um, so today we couldn't get the video to work, but um, we've got Jen from Herman Miller on the line here. Hey, Jen, how are you? Hi, I'm I'm doing great. I've, you know, been better, but I'm adapting to technology every single day, and uh, it's going to be good. So thanks for having me. Heck yeah! Before we get started, everybody is now chatting in about the goats. Can you tell us a little bit about these cute, 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 cute goats? Oh my gosh. Okay, funny story about the goats. We. By the way, I can see the screen now. Okay. <laughs> um, you might need to mute your laptop and then um, talk into the phone. How about that? Thank you, designers, for your patience with our technical difficulties here. We are all making it work from That's working from better. home. Is that better? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Shorter story, longer. Um, when we moved into the property about eight years ago, they came with llamas, and nobody really told us that we were going to be getting llamas when we bought the house. And um, so we ended up keeping the llamas just because why move them if they lived here for 10 years? Well, they get kind of lonely when you get down to low numbers. And so rather than perpetuate a llama farm, we got a couple of goats, and they do a great job at helping us manage all the blackberries and extra grass we have around here. And they're just like little dogs that don't require a whole lot of maintenance. Wow. And what are their names? Uh, darker one is Felix, and the lighter one is Jasper. And next time we do this, you should include photos of the llamas as well. That is my request. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we love that. All right. So now that we've covered the llamas and the goats, um, designers, let's chat about Herman Miller. Can you give us a little over overview or a little history of Herman Miller as a company before we dig into this new line? Absolutely. So our history goes back over 100 years. Um, our founder actually started out in Michigan making reproduction European residential furniture. And through the course of him having such a passion for people, um, we're very well known for our human centered design, as well as passion for the environment. And just an overall understanding that he needed to surround himself with visionaries and thought leaders that were going to not be afraid to take some risks. So over the course of the century, um, you know, our organization has made quite an impact through some various partnerships during the postmodern area with Ray and Charles Eames, Alexander Gerard, um, and you fast forward to 1968, introducing our action office panel system, which was really designed to bring some efficiency into the modern day office environment. Fast forward to 1976 with the introduction of the world's first truly ergonomic task chair. Um, Is that the Aeron chair? Well, no, it was actually called the Ergon chair and it was really fluffy and <laughs> The designer, Bill Stump, you just can't help but fall in love with this guy. It's like he's my dad and my uncle and my grandpa all in one. Um, so he was, uh, you know, the predecessor to the 1994 introduction of the iconic Aeron chair. Got it. Which, um, as you know, we may have we remastered that back in 2018. And so we've been on quite this journey of reinventing what it means to live in a workplace that is just awesome and it's going to meet everybody's individual needs and the needs of the organization at the same time got it and remind me i think i'm remembering my um history of interior design correctly but wasn't the action office um pretty revolutionary in terms of office design that it was basically one of the first if not the first like office system like work system it was. Perfect. And it's very fascinating to pull open the archives and read the letters and the research that went into developing what was designed to be this incredibly flexible way of dividing space. And they were they used the words collaboration back then. <laughs> and it's just a kick in the pants to read 
back into the history and say, gosh, we're talking about the same issues today. It's just the solutions look a little bit different. That's super interesting. So what we're really getting at is that you guys are kind of the OG in terms of like workplace design. So you have a ton of research to back up your designs. It's not like this is just um, aesthetically pleasing, even though it very much is, but you really do a lot of research into not only how people work, but how they sit, how they interact to really craft those designs. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, completely in our DNA and, um, actually in the 1960s was the birth of the Herman Miller research company. And so before launching a solution, we really want to understand what is the need that we're solving for. Got it. Um, I think Canvas Vista is a great example of a need that needed to be solved for. And we, we accomplished that. Sweet. Well, you led me up perfectly. Um, so tell us a little bit about Canvas Vista. It's a great looking line. I will say. That's the most fun about it, right? So it looks different than anything you've ever seen before. And that's one of the attraction points that customers have to it is they want something that's not your traditional panel system. Um, it still lends itself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe it as like the quasi open office plan. So this is a really good solution for organizations who really don't have a desire to have a line of sight higher than about 53 inches. Yeah. So we can accommodate that by adding screens and some vertical, um, some vertical boundary Got it. to achieve a little more privacy. And it looks like you can really play with color here. So in our whole um, portfolio, I think Canvas Office Landscape offers the greatest selection in terms of materiality whether it's we're looking at wood grain laminate or patterns or solids or veneers. Um, and it plays really nice with our brothers and sisters over at Geiger, um, at Magis, at Not One, um, hence the whole family of brand story coming together for a really unique and curated final um, product. Great. I love it. So let's get into the details here. Um, can you talk a little bit about the design of it? and how the design relates to the function of this work station? So Julie Embroider, um, it's funny, a couple of years ago at Neocon when we launched this product, you know, everybody gets dolled up and they're in their heels and their suits and there's this guy walking around the showroom and he was all in really dark clothes and a mohawk. And I was like, dude, I want to get away with a mohawk. Who's the guy with a mohawk? <laughs> Because it was Joy Reuter. <laughs> the designer. designer. You can rock a mohawk. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Canvas, on, uh, uh, Canvas Vista and really going beyond that to the whole office landscape platform. And so the challenge that we were finding is that organizations, obviously real estate isn't cheap. Um, there's this magical number of when you go to lay out a floor plan in a six by six footprint and we know that the, I'm going to call it a more traditional or conventional layout where you've got a main desk and then a return to the side. Mm -hmm. Once you have to start getting less than 36 square foot per person, you start getting forced to go into that benching application, which is a little less desirable, not so great for the user experience. So what we were trying to solve for is how do we keep that conventional layout, having the workstation feel larger than it is, and helping the organization achieve an overall smaller footprint. So whether they're getting higher density, they're getting more bodies into a space, maybe they're condensing and freeing up space so they can lease out half their floor. And then maybe it's just that they want their individuals to be delighted and thrilled when they come to sit down to work and they have this really inviting and open area that doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Yeah. One of the things that I really notice when it comes to like making something look bigger than it is, I really love that the panel does not go all the way to the floor. Like for some reason that is like a big psychological trick of like, it looks bigger than it is just because it's floating, if that makes sense. Um, so that's one of the things I really love about, about this line. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you incorporate power or cording or that kind of thing into this, into the system? What do the designers need to know in terms of like, where do you put electrical stuff? Yes. So if you think of it in the same terms of a panel frame system, so we're going to have our power entry at the, at the end base or mid run, 
like you see in that image on the right hand side, or it can still come from a power pole situation. Um, but the planning is going to be much the same as any conventional um, panel system. However, because that chase, we have now lifted it up and we're running it over the storage units, you can see that it's much easier to access power and data from a user standpoint. Yeah. And also we offer the ability to conceal the power entry if it is in a mid run scenario. So whether, you know, it's just a simple cover that goes over the leg because our ultimate goal here is to maintain that really clean aesthetic to where you don't have cords draping from the desk to the floor. Got it. And it's makes it a little bit more easily sort of usable by the person sitting there, right? Makes it a little bit more Perfect. functional. Yep, got some free and clear kick space. Your janitorial staff is like, awesome, no <laughs> mouse nests underneath the couch. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh my gosh, those cords do that. Um, so when it comes to this system, it looks very simple in the amount of parts that are sort of accompanying it. Is this something that designers can sort of like mix and match to create a really custom look for their clients? They can. Um, we talk an awful lot about a very simplistic kit of parts. Good. And because um, because it plays so nicely with other systems in the family, it's completely customizable. So we're going to be offering, we do offer a height adjustable desk or a little fixed A-frame desk. Um, what detail you can't see is at the top of that chase, there lies three channels. Oh, actually, you can't in the picture on the right. Um, that is where you can insert screens and boundaries. So anybody on one side or the other can have one person wants a marker board and the other person wants a tackable surface. You can put one in each channel, right? Um, accessories in terms of um, shelves and really thinking carefully about what the individuals need to store. So there's um, shared storage, kind of like you see there, and we pay special attention to really the fact that people need more room to store personal effects these days, less so when it comes to filing, but there is definitely a file drawer available um, as an option as well. Got it. We did have one question, but um, Emma already answered it on the line. The question was on the T-shaped bar, um, what is the function of this? Um, is it lighting or what is it? And Emma has responded, it's a light. Is she right? It is light. She is right. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> it's a, a touch sensor technology and it offers ambient lighting. I it's a dual it's a dual purpose as well. I think it does a really great job of breaking up the line of sight in a really non-intrusive way. Yeah. It really distinguishes the space, I feel like. Again, same with the the illusion of like the panel not going down to the floor. That just like mm -hmm. hints at separation without actually feeling overwhelming do you know what i mean this is all about implied boundary yes right that's a so better word we, for it <laughs> we have implied boundary we've put up some hollow um separation points that still defines the individual space without blocking it off yeah and as i remember from my design history that's kind of really important that people want a place of their own but they also want to feel connected to people so this kind of crosses that line very beautifully yes Sweet. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit more about, um, Ooh, this one has a picture of the sit stand. So that is possible when it comes to, um, adding panels, it looks like in these pictures, they have some added panels to the back there. When it comes to planning for things like that, is that something designers should work with you on? Like how do they like play with these kit of parts? Yes. So whether it's myself helping them establish what that might look like or something from our dealership, if they're involved, and I'm just going to go ahead and address like the elephant in the room, right? We've got COVID-19 and people might be looking at these slides going, oh my gosh, people are asking for much taller separation, et cetera. So even though we were talking about um, shrinking of the workstation, it absolutely goes the other way. It's very scalable. I think of it as an accordion. You, you know, you're working with this long spine that you can um, expand or you can shrink it over time with minimal parts to store. But when it comes to the screens, we have a lot of fun with materiality. So whether it's fabric or marker board or laminate, et cetera, there are also a number of different heights that we can go with. And again, I mentioned that 53 inches. Um, that is our standard. If you're gonna open up a price book and see what is it we do every day, that 53 inch you know, floor to top of screen height 
is what the design intent is. Um, not to say if somebody needed a couple extra inches higher, we would absolutely explore what that would look like. Got it. And so designers can work with you on like what fabric to use on the panel. Is that something that's customizable? It is. We have a couple different fabric screens. Um, we house our chip charts out on hermanmiller.com, but um, whether it's, you know, coordinating some existing fabrics or having a lot of fun just searching through them. Absolutely. Got it. Um, cool. And so I know you have another product called canvas. Does this sort of play with that one a little bit is like you said, this is a kit of parts that can mix with your other lines. Can you talk about how a designer would sort of mix and match? Like say they have a client who has an existing canvas line or an existing Herman Miller product. How can they sort of integrate sort of old and new or two different systems with this? Thank you for asking because the biggest, they're one of the, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, can I attach Canvas Vista or Canvas Channel to a Canvas wall panel? So infrastructure to infrastructure, we don't hook those together per se, but I don't think you'd really want to anyways. Um, there's different families within the Canvas line that might be better at supporting individual, um, individual work, others that support group work. Um, where that cohesion comes into play are from the selection of materials and then also just the details of design, whether it's the drawer pulls or the foot design, the tea leg shape on the height adjustable table, the PARI screens, all of those get pulled together. And so when you stand back and look at the whole floor plate, you might have Canvas Vista over in one corner supporting a group of four people who need to work well together. And then off in the distance, you've got a single table that's in a private office and that's next to a canvas private office landscape that's completely outfitted with storage and a table, et cetera. Got it. So I, I love that story because a lot of times our clients already do have a system. And so finding something that integrates without it looking super different, I think is a really lovely way to help your clients. I mean, what a great sustainability story because then they don't have to get rid of everything. They can just add what they need and then keep going. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. Um, so designers, do you have any questions for Jen while she's here? It may be about llamas or goats or Herman Miller products. Um, we can do it all. Um, you can also order samples or get information from Jen right from our website. So you can press that get info now button. Um, in the meantime, Jen, anything designers should keep in mind when specking Canvas Vista, something like a tip and trick that you can just leave them with? Um, I think our best tip and trick is our um, thought starters at hermanmiller.com. If you want to go out there, play around on the product page, you're going to find a whole lot of initial tools, including Revit symbols, AutoCAD symbols. It's enough to get you started and to be dangerous. And then just call us in when you want um, um, some assistance or even just help saying, hey, these, you know, this is how this space is going to get used. Jen, can you help steer me toward the right Canvas solution? Awesome. And you can you help designers when they um, when they have clients that say we like to work this way. Can you help them sort of craft what the best workplace is for the way that they work? Is that something you can help with? Oh my gosh, that's the dream question. Is it? <laughs> it's so much easier when I'm just like, tell me how you work, and I'll help get you there instead Got it. of I really want this and I don't know why. You know? <laughs> right. We do have a question. Um, how is pricing for this product compared to other of your solutions? Yes. So I'm going to compare, if you're familiar with how, let's say, for example, the canvas wall, a traditional panel system would price out, this is going to be right in line. Okay. So, of course, you know, you can strip it down or build it up, but it's in that similar similar arena. Well, I love that. Um, no upcharge, just the same old. Love that. Um, sweet. So designers, as we wrap up here, if you're interested in registering for another snack break, um, you can smash that register now button. We just released the next two weeks of um, snack breaks. I believe they're going live tomorrow. So I'm super excited to see you all again. In the meantime, Jen, it was so nice to talk with you about this beautiful line and about your goats. Um, I'm a little obsessed with them. I'm so excited we got to talk about that. <laughs> so glad. Thanks for having me, Ren. Yeah, and thanks, designers, for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. All right. All right, we'll see ya. Thanks.